Well, hello to my Sunday School friends. It is really good to see you. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that wherever you are in the world that uh, you're in school and that you're able to learn and to grow and to practice being who God calls you to be. Uh, if at the moment you're doing remote learning, we trust that God will bring us back together soon, will help us soon, and we wait together for that day. But in the meantime, let's continue doing our Bible stories. We've been talking about Samuel for a while now. Remember, he's a little boy in the temple. He had a vision from God. He's grown up to be a mighty prophet. God has used him in all kinds of ways. And in the last couple of weeks, we talked about how Samuel gave the people what they wanted. He gave them a king, even though he thought that that was wrong, even though he understood when they didn't that having a king was not going to be great for them in the long term. And even though he understood that it was it was offensive to God, that the people didn't want God to lead them. They wanted a king to lead them like other nations. But God told Samuel, warn them and then give them a king. And over the last week or two, we've talked about how uh, Samuel did that, that he anointed Saul and then he introduced Saul to all of the people of Israel. And, and now Israel has a king. So, you know, Samuel's been doing the judging work. Samuel's been settling disputes and Samuel's been telling people how to live and what they should do. Stuff that now the king is going to do. So Samuel calls all the people together and it's, his, it's in his head that he should resign some of these public duties. That now there's a king, there's no reason for Samuel to be doing it. So Samuel brings everybody together at Gilgal, right? That's a town, that's a place. And, and then they offer sacrifices to God, asking God uh, to bless the king uh, and asking God to bless the nation. And then Samuel has a conversation with the people. Uh, and he says, now listen, I'm old and there's some things I want to say to you. First, I'm going to retire here um, and we'll get to what that means in a minute, but I'm going to retire and I want to make sure that none of you think that I have ever taken advantage of you or stolen from you or defrauded you in any way. Because if you have, I want to hear about it right now. I don't want you to whisper about this some other time or some other place. Let's settle it. If you think I've been wrong to you, talk to me will make things right. And all the people agreed that though Samuel's sons were kind of dopes, Samuel himself had never stolen from anyone, defrauded anyone, done anything wrong. He had kept his job well. And then Samuel reminded the people of all of the good things that God had done for them, how God got them out of slavery in Egypt, how God took care of them in the wilderness, how God protected them from their enemies. He reminded them that over and over and over and over and over again, they forgot about God. They worshiped other gods. They did the wrong thing. They didn't keep God's laws. So God would punish them. But as soon as they remembered who they were and who they were supposed to be, God would forgive them and rescue them and drive drive out their enemies and the whole thing would start over. And Samuel reminded them of the great love and the faithfulness of God. And then Samuel said, and now you've decided you want to be like those other nations, that you want to have a king. And this is, again, a great wickedness. This is a great this is a terrible thing that you have done. And just so you know that it's not just me, an old cranky man talking, but it's God. I ask God to send thunder and lightning and rain so that you know that what I'm saying comes from God. And immediately there was thunder and lightning and rain and it lasted a long time and the people were very afraid and they were very sad. And they said to Samuel, please pray for us that God would forgive us. Please help us to, to do better and, and ask God not to kill us, right? We know we did the wrong thing. We believe you now we did the wrong thing asking for a king, but we got a king. So what, what, what are we going to do? What should we do? And, and Samuel said to them, listen, don't be afraid. It was the wrong thing you did. But if you keep God's laws, if you follow God's commandments, if you obey your king, if you do what you're supposed to do, if your king remembers who's the Lord and, and what the, the, the proper job of a king is, then God will take care of you and he will bless you and he will forgive you. But listen, if, if you do more of this forgetting thing, if the king forgets who God is and what he's supposed to do, it's going to be the same discipline thing as before. 
because God has chosen you as his people. God is building you into his family. And God's not just going to let you wander into dumbness. God's going to discipline you as much as you need. And it's up to you to decide how much discipline you want. And listen, I told you I'm retiring, but the, I'm just retiring from the running the government stuff. Far be it from me to stop praying for you. I am always going to pray for you, Samuel said. I'm always going to love you. I'm always going to lead you and advise you in the good and the right way. Fear the Lord. Serve him faithfully with all your heart. Remember all the things that he's done for you. And God will bless you. But if you do wicked stuff, you're going to be swept away, both you and your brand new king. That's a pretty good retirement speech, don't you think? It's full of truth. It's got some warnings in it. It's got a lot of hope in it. And that's, uh, that's where we're going to pause today. I do want you to remember that God has chosen you, that God loves you, and that if you insist on being disciplined, God will discipline you. But it's God's intention that you be at peace with God, that God blesses you and protects you and keeps you. And so you and I both were called to, to keep God's commandments, to love our neighbors, to love God with our heart, soul, strength, and mind, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to do the things that Jesus calls us to do. You take care of yourself. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye-bye now.